my farmlet. I'm Kat the Farmer and this video is going to be all about my bottom feeded greenhouse benches. So I made these greenhouse benches last spring and I've been using them for a year. This is the first deep winter that I've used them. Today the high is 25, the low is 12 and my plants survived. It's important that I cover them with row cover every night. If I don't do that the heat uh, ends up going into the space and being lost. But if I do, then the setting that I set on my heating tables, the temperature it stays almost exactly at, what, at my setting. So with that in the cell tray, I can control the ideal temperature in here. And I have two zones. So this table is one set of heating wires and this table is another set of heating wires. bench top that is already filled with mortar and concrete and that's drying and this one I have not yet put the masonry into so you can see what's below it which is helpful so it's this purple two inch insulation foam and then heating wires which are you know for your bathroom below your tile and then above that I put this concrete reinforcing mesh um, that we happen to have two pieces just the right size and then I had to zip tie it down to the foam um, by drilling holes through and then zip tying around and so that is run via electrical outlet so it's electric power and um, and it doesn't take a whole lot and because the heat's going to be concentrated right under the plants my hope, although it's not proven yet, is that we'll just have to heat this small zone where the plants are. That heat will transfer through into the moist soil, into the moist leaves, and those plants will stay at their perfect temperature without having to run a propane heater that's hanging from the ceiling, heating the air, and then the heat from the air will have to keep the plants at the perfect temperature. So it's a bottom up approach instead of a top down approach. Okay, so down here you can see how this is all put together. This is the plug that comes out of the heating wire, has a long insulated lead on it. And then I plug this into one of these Ink Bird thermostatic regulators or thermostatic outlets. And on here I set my high and low temperature. So that tells it when to turn on or when to turn off. And that um, knows the temperature because it has one of these uh, waterproof temperature sensors. So this gets put into a cell in my cell trays in my growing medium and that's what tells it to turn on or off um, which is pretty cool so it's probably important that I tell you what I don't like about these greenhouse tables because they're not perfect they um, it was pretty hard to get the the masonry level so there's a little bit of variation in them and for that reason I haven't been able to effectively use them for bottom watering um, so I've ended up top watering um, for most of the season or putting them in bottom watering trays, which was not the original intention. And maybe I'll fix that at some point. Another thing to be aware of is that it's bottom heat. So if your temperature sensor falls out of your tray into a colder area, 
the table is going to overheat your plants and it could dry out really fast. So sometimes I'll knock it out on accident and come back and my plants are all dry and struggling. Um, but that's just a management issue. Um, I'm really grateful that I am not heating it with a propane heater. The cost is close, but definitely a little bit higher for electric. And if my power were to go out, then I need a backup plan. So I think I'm gonna get a little propane salamander heater for times when that happens, or um, be able to plug it into a generator if the power goes out on cold nights, which is usually when it goes out around here is when it snows or there's an ice storm or something like that. So those are the things that I would be aware of if you're thinking of a project like this. Thank you.